midnight tonight, it will be legal for you to make your own gun at home, with the click of a mouse, and without a background check. This includes assault-style rifles like the AR-15. Even the president saying today that he is concerned and says these guns don't make much sense. Uh, here's the issue. It is his own administration that helped open this door. And now a group of attorneys general from eight states and, and Washington, D.C. are working to stop these designs from being available online. They are suing the Trump administration over its decision to allow a Texas nonprofit to publish the downloadable blueprints. And that group is called Defense Distributed. And CNN Money senior tech correspondent Lori Siegel just interviewed the company's founder, Cody Wilson. And obviously he has been fighting this for years. Yeah and has won. Yeah, that's what he said. He said to me, I've already won this. You know, you have all these states pushing back and trying to stop this. But he said, you know, just moments ago to me, over a thousand people have downloaded these blueprints online. We're talking, you know, semi-automatic rifle, uh, you know, AR-15 blueprints to enable people to actually have access and democratize access to this. And, you know, he said it's not about the Second Amendment, but this is about the First Amendment. He's always been someone who's taken a pretty extreme view of free speech and looking at this and, you know, kind of pushing those boundaries. So take a listen to what he said. Brooke. You have more than 20 states trying to block you from making these no, directions right, yeah. available online. So what do you expect to happen? I expect they won't win. We've already published the files, so I don't know how they could get me to stop publishing the files. President Trump tweeted that he's looking into 3D plastic guns. He said this doesn't seem to make sense. What's your response to the president? I don't sell 3D guns, so the president will understand that in time. Are you worried that the government will reverse its decision? Oh, like I told you, I already uploaded the plans. I mean, I, you know, it, it's the ship is sailed. It's public domain information now. It's irrevocable. No one can take it back. The democratization of guns online, giving people the ability to 3D print their own guns, would make it feasible for felons, minors, mentally ill to have access to firearms. Are you worried about those repercussions? No, I, I don't believe that access to information is ever tremendously negative or a bad thing. I know that people can use information for bad things, but this isn't a justification to what? stop a publisher from speaking. How would you keep a minor away from 3D printing a gun when you have the democratization of these plans online that would make it readily available for folks to do this in the click of a button? I'm sorry, like, I mean, do public libraries perform background checks on people before they, they read books? It just doesn't, that's just not how speech and publication works. So look, if, if, if it's legal for you to make a gun in this country, it's illegal for you to make a gun, all right? I mean, you're violating the law, but that doesn't mean that that possibility prevents people from being able to legally share and freely access this information. It just doesn't work that way. You look at the case of uh, the 25-year-old man who went on a shooting spree in Santa Monica with a homemade AR-15, killing five people. Are you worried that the implications of democratizing this Im type of information would lead to similar types of deaths? I guess the question that is like connected to the word you use, democracy, is democracy dangerous or not? Right? Can the people be trusted or not? You're provocateur. You like to push the limits. Do you think felons, uh, minors, mentally ill folks uh, who are able to, to click and download and print, do you think they can be trusted or do you think there should be more government oversight over, over what you're doing? No, I definitely don't think there should be more government oversight. I believe that people can publish this information. I know that they can legally under the First Amendment. Now, if the question is a moral question, like, well, is it right? Should you do it? Again, I, my answer is yes. I, I believe that I should. I believe in what I'm doing. When I'm called a provocateur, that, that somehow takes away like the seriousness of what I'm doing. Like I'm only doing it you know, for a stunt or something. No, I, I believe in what I'm doing. What does the world look like to you in the next decade with some of the technology that you've pushed forward? If people have like a, an internet resource of some type of encyclopedic scope, it should allow like more rapid innovation in the space as well. I know that that upsets everyone. Chuck Schumer's out there with a bill today saying, you know, no, guns should only ever be the way they've always been. And we have to prevent them from becoming new. What's your response to him? It's just a depressing world to live in. There's less to hope for when things have to be frozen and things have to be managed. And I don't know, I find it profoundly unromantic. I think a lot of people would say it's depressing to live in a world where you think about a lot of people who probably shouldn't have access to handguns being able to readily have the ability to make them from home. Look, I mean, that might depress them, but it, it excites and inspires the imagination of, of many other people. And unfortunately, we have always had the law on our side. This is a big deal. I think the implications of this um, 
can't be ignored. I think that's why you see so many people beginning to talk about this. And a little bit about Cody Wilson. I interviewed him uh, just last September because he had a, a website called Hatreon, which is a play off of Patreon, which is a crowdfunding site. And he was giving access to folks like neo-Nazis and all different types of people who had been kicked off of these platforms like Facebook and Twitter and giving them access to raise money for their speech. So he's always pushed the limits. And you see he's unforgiving about this. This has been a battle he's been waging from 2013. And so the settlement, you know, was very, very big for him. It'll be interesting to see how this plays out over the next couple days. Uh, I talked to, on the flip side, the Connecticut Attorney General last hour, who has joined a number of states vehemently opposed to everything this man just said. Uh, but again, it, midnight tonight. Uh, right. Midnight tonight. Lori, thank you so much thank for sharing you. that side of it. But, but let's talk now uh, just about the mechanics of this. How, how, how exactly is a 3D firearm made? So with me now is Terry Wollers. He's a 3D printing expert. And, and so, Terry, let's push the, the legality and the politics aside. And just simply, how is, easy is it to get a 3D printer? And, and how much does it cost? Well, you can buy a 3D printer now for under $300. So it's um, available to virtually anyone. And, and it's uh, reasonably easy to unpack and set up. But to build good uh, good parts and, and products with it is not so easy. And, and my biggest fear is that uh, you have an explosion going on when you fire a round out of a gun. And, and you need to have material that can contain that explosion and so that, uh, they're simply unsafe in my view. What, what is the material? Is it plastic? Well, these 3D printers can print in many materials, but, but plastic is the, the, by far the most common. Uh, and so that was the intent when Cody Wilson published these plans, the, the files that you can download and then uh, build the 3D printed gun. So uh, the, the difficulty is that there's so many, there's, there's thousands of different types of, of these 3D printers and then, you know, uh, countless numbers of potential users, all of which have different levels of skill. It's not push button. It's not that you just push a button and create a, a, uh, a good quality, uh, in this case, gun that would uh, safely fire um, uh, around. Terry, I was watching one of these videos earlier today just to understand how this works. And so by the time all the different pieces, the, the plastic pieces of the gun, you put them together, but it's still not a, a fully functioning gun. How, how easy t is it to, to put those mechanisms in place to actually get it to fire a bullet? Well, that's the problem. And you might be able, you might be able to successfully fire one round, but even then it might. I've seen a gun fire and it, it, it simply exploded. The whole gun did. And so my, as I said, my biggest fear is that it could injure the, the, the person firing the weapon or somebody around them. And so it's, it's just not, it's not safe. Have you seen an uptick in sales of 3D printers? Oh, yeah. We've seen uh, dramatic growth over the years. But, but for industrial applications mostly, for automotive, uh, aerospace, consumer products, uh, medical type parts, and, and a, a range of others. Terry Wallers. Thank you. You're welcome.